Hello, folks. So tonight, I'm going after a comet. And it's called Comet Atlas, which I think is a really cool name. And um, it might be a little early to be going after it. I mean, I see other people capturing it, but um, it's going to become so bright, I heard, uh, maybe in a month or two, that it, it might even be visible to the naked eye. Wouldn't that be cool? I can't wait to see if that happens. But... Um, I still have a mono camera. This is one of those nights when I, I, I wish I did have an OSC hooked up to my Rasa. So it, it's going to be in mono using my L Pro filter. And uh, I'm going for an animation like I always do because that's my favorite thing to do. I like to capture things moving up there. It, it, bringing things to life is, is awesome. Hi, Kane. Well, I'm going to go inside now. It's cold again. It's going down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. So I'll see you later. Okay, I am controlling everything from inside the house right now, and um, I'm looking at my surveillance, and it looks like I've, I'm running two rigs tonight, but really, my CGX setup over here and Explorer Scientific is out of action. I had to park it because I can't connect to it. Um, my USB hub, I think, has finally kicked the bucket. I've been having problems lately. Um, I would have to unplug it, plug it back in to get everything to work, and now that doesn't even work anymore. So I kind of procrastinated. I knew I needed a new hub ready to go, and and I didn't order one. And now I'm going to lose a full clear night on, on this setup. So that's a shame. Although I do have a new USB hub on my solar setup. It's in the garage, but you know what? It's it's below freezing right now, and I'm not up for, for taking it off the solar setup and putting it on here. I I can't do it. Not tonight. I at least have one rig working, and that's the Rasa. And it's pointed at the Comet. And it's really cool from what I've seen so far. So let me show you what I've got. Okay, so let me show you how easy it is to actually find a Comet with Sequence Generator Pro. Because all you have to do is you just search Google for Comet. Atlas SkyLive, because I want to go to the SkyLive website, and it will give you the exact coordinates of where the comet is right now. And um, it's right here, the right ascension and declination, and all you have to do is, I've already got it up here, but um, you can just go into Tools, click on your Framing Mosaic Wizard, click RA, and you plug in those coordinates into these two boxes, the RA and the, and the deck. And if you're not sure what format to put the numbers in, you can just click on an object, um, say, for example, M81. And it will show you the coordinates of M81. And now you know what format it wants those coordinates from the website in. So once you would do that, um, you, you would plug in the values, you would click fetch, and it would, then you would just draw your box. And it will center... It'll put the comet dead center for you. Um, and there it is for me, right? This is my, uh, uh, I've been imaging maybe for at least 90 minutes now, and the comet is right there. It's kind of small <laughs> for my field of view, but I can see it. I can see there's a tail there. Um, and let me show you how much this thing has moved over about 90 minutes so far. Um, if, I, if I can here, because I pulled up frame one. See, it says 15-1, and what happened is um, I accidentally put my my repeat limit at 120, and the sequence ended. I wanted to go way past 120 subs. I'm only doing, um, I, I've got it set for, for gain zero, offset 10, because of my light pollution, when I'm doing broadband, I have to I have to go zero for, for this scope because uh, uh, or I'll be overexposed real quick. And I'm only doing 15 second exposures, and it says CLS here, but I'm actually uh, using an Opto Long L Pro filter. That's the one I stuck in the the filter drawer there. But let me show you how much this comet has moved in only 90 minutes. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to see how this thing does all night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay all night on this sucker. I've never gone all night on a comet. Um, so this is frame one, and you can see the comet lined up between these two stars here. Now, let's go into this one, and uh, how much would I magnify here? About a, let's see, 144? 
Let's go up to 144 and see how close. Okay. And, uh, it's moved so much it's almost hard to see how much it's moved. See how it's between these two stars? Well, here's these two stars, and it's gone from about here up to here, from from about there to there in 90 minutes. So uh, if, if I stay up, see right there, if I stay on this sucker all night, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to see a long, it's going to travel a, a good distance. I would say this is real science right here. When you have unaltered data, and you're looking at how much a comet moves, that feels like science, you know. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, well, let me show you my guiding. Guiding is no big deal. Well, 1.91. <laughs> it's gusty out there, too, and I just did a, uh, got a few dithers in there, too, so I don't really care. Guiding, uh, I'm not even sure I even need to do guiding. I'm only doing 15-second exposures. Why am I even bothering to guide? So, yeah, we don't need to worry about guiding. We'll see how this animation goes at the end. I'll see you guys later. Do you want to be on camera? Let everybody see what a big dog you are. Hi, buddy. Good boy, Kane. Oh, no, don't bite. I know you, you're getting too big and strong to bite. He likes to play bite, but he's been good lately. He doesn't do that. He knows he's too big and strong. You're a good boy, aren't you, Kane? All right. What a good boy. Oh, no. Ow. I know, I know. You're just playing. One time he did that and he really crushed my bones. And I, it was, my hand was sore for a day. Okay, I gotta go, buddy. Okay, I'll see you.